Hey guys, today I'm gonna show you how we make it work in our space, how we homeschool in a small space. So we don't have a fancy homeschool room like probably most of you don't. We homeschool right at the same table that we eat all of our meals and pretty much do everything else as a family. So today I'm gonna take you on a little tour of all the places we keep all of our materials and how we make it work. Okay, so a little backstory on our homeschool space. When we first started homeschooling, we did also did not have a space for a room. And so we created a space in the main living area. I had some things in our living room, some things around the dining room. And so really for me, the key is if you are going to create a homeschool space at your dining room table, you wanna keep it tasteful, even though it still kind of looks like a classroom, it still matches my decor, goes with my vibe, um, and still looks really pretty. So if we have people over and they don't, they're not homeschoolers, it doesn't look super strange that we have all of this here. They understand that we are and we just use what we have. Um, also at our old house, one thing we did that was really cool is we had a huge chalkboard wall behind our dining room table that we used for school. I have a DIY chalkboard wall blog post that details out how to do it. You can find that link in the description. One thing I've learned after talking to tons and tons of homeschool moms is that a homeschool room is really fun, but it's not totally necessary. And often when people have an entire room dedicated to their homeschooling, they end up at the dining room table anyway. So what I've realized is that homeschooling rooms are usually more about housing the stuff than where you actually do school. In our future, I would really love to have a full room dedicated to homeschooling, but I imagine that the ideal situation would be that it's still really close to your living room, to your kitchen, to your laundry room, and to the outdoors. So we are designing a home that we're going to be um, building within the next year or so, and in that home, we do have a homeschool room that has access to all of those things. If you don't have the luxury of having a homeschool room, it is totally possible to homeschool at your dining room table. And I'm gonna show you kind of how we make that work in our home. Okay, so of course you need storage. So I wanted my storage to be pretty and I wanted it to be close enough to the table that it wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't have to go all the way upstairs or pull things out. Um, I wanted it to be convenient. So I got this hutch for $50 off of Facebook Marketplace. I know that's a score. Just gotta do some digging. Um, and of course it was probably intended to be used for dishes and things. It does sit between my kitchen and my school area, but it still looks tasteful. Um, so now I'm gonna just show you everything that I keep in the storage area right here. So here at the top, I have handcraft materials. Each one of these bins is for each one of my older children. So it has a project that they're kind of working through and any other projects that we're currently doing. Um, I have another storage area I'm gonna show you in a minute where all of our materials are for things like this, but this is the current used items. So in here we have some polymer clay, a sewing book, because these are items that we're currently using. On the next shelf, I have some this basket of non-drying modeling clay and wiki sticks. My kids use this to um, model anything that we're using for nature study. They like to model different animals and then they also just play with these things when I'm reading aloud. Um, if we were using this on a regular basis, I would move it to the top shelf that I'm gonna show you in a minute, but this is just kind of like backup items. This is beeswax for modeling, same kind of concept. We, we create things out of it intentionally and they also just play with it during read alouds. And again, I would put it on the top shelf over there if we were using it continuously. And then um, currently I have some string and beads because my preschooler has been beading. So this is kind of the stuff that I want access to quickly. Um, over here I have some math materials. I have whiteboards for each kid and we use Math UC. Um, you can read all about our math journey and the math curriculum we love in a blog post that I'll put a link in the description. But these are our math blocks. I always get asked where I got the wooden trays and unfortunately they don't sell them anymore. Um, I got them at a used um, homeschool consignment store in our area, but the math blocks are part of the curriculum. So when the kids need these, they know they're right here. Um, this is another set of those. Down here on the bottom, this is our scripture cards that we're, as we're memorizing scripture, we use an index card system and I have those in here. This is, um, some more art supplies, some pastels. These are our daily rhythm cards, which I will show you in a minute where I hang these in our classroom. These are in my shop, I'll put a link below. 
So I just keep them in here so we can easily switch them out. A three hole punch and our paper tray. I have three types of paper. I have a watercolor paper, lined paper, and printer paper. So we use all three types of paper often, so I like to keep them here. Um, one thing is anything up here for the kids, they're not allowed to use anything that's in this cabinet without asking. And so down here I keep more paper that the kids are allowed to use whenever they would like to do free drawing. I have regular printer paper and tracing paper. I have our pencil sharpener over here. I would say this is probably our number one used homeschool supply is our pencil sharpener. And then these two drawers are more office kind of things or backup materials. So these are just household items, some school items, things that I need access to and the kids don't aren't allowed to get into these either. Um, down here, I used to keep things for the toddlers. I found that it got really unorganized and so I'm trying to keep things down here that I don't, that the kids aren't gonna wanna try to get into. So this is actually where we keep all of our school books. So these are all of our curriculum books that we don't use, that we're not currently using, but I might need to refer to when I'm doing my homeschool planning or we might use later on in the school year. So these are the ones that are all for the, what we're doing this year. This is my Treehouse Nature Study curriculum binder. Um, I have other curriculum binders, things that we're gonna be using this school year, some sheets that I actually need to organize for my kids for the whole year. These are worksheets, some empty trays here. And then this down here are my current library books. So I have to do another post sometime about my library system, but basically this book basket are all of the books that we're going to be reading um, within the first couple weeks of school as we're starting up school next week. So I have them all organized here. We have a segment of our school day where I pull out this book basket and my older children have 30 minutes to just read whatever they'd like in here. And so the, they are curated for what we're learning in both geography, history, and nature study. And then this basket is organized with dividers on the next few weeks of school. So this is for the following week and then the next week. And so as I get library books in, I organize them by week here and I have a little overflow happening here. So that's just kind of how I, my, my system is for library books. So as you can tell, we're pretty minimal with our supplies. We mostly rely on books, art supplies, the things that we use every single day are in our school area. This is stuff that we use maybe weekly. So now I'm going to show you our other space that's in our laundry room. It's just right around the corner from here. And in this space, I it's not pretty, but it's where I keep a lot of things for our preschoolers, games, things to mostly engage them, and art supplies that we just pull from sometimes. So this is our laundry room and the other side of this room is our pantry. Above the laundry room, the washer and dryer, there's the shelf. So I decided to go ahead and get bins and just label them. And mostly what this is it are things that my little two, ages two and three, that I pull out for them to do while we're doing school to keep them busy and engaged. So things like paint supplies, Play-Doh, kinetic sand. I have trays over here that we pull out to do most of this messy play on so it's easy to clean up. Um, these are, this is stuff like bubbles and chalk and water beads, um, little things that I, things for their hands to stay busy mostly. So that's what all of this stuff is. And then this is just a huge random bin of craft supplies that I'll pull things from at the beginning of the week before we do our homeschool lessons and I'll put them in a basket a little closer to the table for us to pull from to use during lessons. So right here next to our school area, I have our daily rhythm cards. And what I did here was I just hung a Velcro strip with the, uh, the scratchy side out and on the back of my cards, I put the soft side. So I keep all of them in this basket and each day I put out what we're going to do in our day, even my non-readers really love these because they can see the picture and it helps them understand what's going on in our day. So I leave the basket right here in my cabinet and I have these right here. I also have a calendar right here that the kids look at and refer to when they're doing their morning time menus, which I'll show you in just a bit. So now I'm gonna show you how we do our homeschool in our dining room. So we don't even have a separate dining room and then like a kitchen. Eden type of situation. This is literally where we eat breakfast, lunch, dinner, where the kids draw, 
It's where we play board games, where we do puzzles. This table is everything for us and it is for our school as well. And so one thing that's really helped is having shelves on the wall and especially things up high. This is new for us and I'm loving it because my two and three year old can't get into them. As well as my seven and nine year old, they know that anything on this top shelf is used just for school and they don't have free reign access to it. So now I'm just gonna show you all the little bits and pieces that we have in our school area right now. Just know that it's always changing and that's what I love about our space is that I have some simple shelving, but I can always change baskets, bins, and different things that are used on these things. So this is an Ikea picture ledge. And so it's made for picture frames. We use it mostly for books, but it's deep enough that I can also put mason jars on it with materials. So here I keep our morning time menus. These are restaurant menu covers, which I talk a lot about. Um, I love using them at morning time. I put them out for my kids. We have two versions of the morning time bundle in our shop. One is the classic morning time bundle for older children. And then we have the new preschool morning time bundle. So each of my children ages two, three, seven, and nine all get one of these. They include the traceable calendar, the date and time chart, weather charts. So there are two versions. So everybody gets a dry erase marker and is able to use this at the same time. Um, as you can see up here, I have just some string with some clips and here's where I display our display sheets from Treehouse Nature Study. Each week there's a poem, a folk song, and a piece of art and other display sheets. So I like to switch those out every week and kind of keep our space looking fresh. Over here um, are the standard books that we're constantly referring to. So as you saw before, our book basket are the changing books and I pull the whole basket out and put it away. These are books that I might pull from multiple times every single week. I get asked about this poster all of the time. I love posters from Catalini Papers and I will often change this poster out. These are um, Ikea poster hangers. So I just switch the poster out whenever I'm looking for something fresh in my space. Got this huge basket thrifting and inside this basket holds all of the things that I as the teacher need to refer to throughout the day. So I have my homeschool planner, teacher guides, an encyclopedia, an atlas, my lesson books for spelling and language arts. So anything that I need to refer to as far as teacher manuals go in this basket. During meals or other times where we're spreading out on the table, this basket just stays right here in this corner. Other things that I have on the table are a Bluetooth speaker for playing stories and music. We have a lamp and a CD player, old school CD player for playing audiobooks. My husband built me this shelf and I love it so much. We like to keep our paints up there, some little chalkboards, and these are dry erase lined boards. Right over here is a little chalkboard. You could probably find one. My husband built this one for me. My little ones love to draw on it. Sometimes I write our scripture verse on it or we draw diagrams, different things like that. It's mostly just for fun though. Now I'm gonna show you everything on this shelf. I know you're gonna be asking where you can buy the shelf. My husband made it. Um, the brackets though, I will put a link in the description. And just so you know, everything that I'm mentioning in here, I will put links in the description. So just check out those when you're done watching the video. Um, over here in this yellow crate, I have some jars with some different manipulatives and small toys that the kids can play with while I'm reading aloud. These are also fun to grab for the toddlers to play with. And I showed you some more that are in the homeschool cabinet. These are just ones that we're currently using often. So I have those and I have plus plus right now. This year we're learning all about geography. So I feel like an official homeschooler now because we have a globe. So that is here. And then here I have a couple of chalkboards. These are from chalk full of design. I have the world and I also have the United States and they are sitting on a cookbook stand. And I like to use this for books, for keeping books open. Sometimes I'll pull this on the table um, to open a book for, for the kids to look at the book while they're doing art or things like that. I have some instruments here. Um, these will also, I'll have a link in the description to my Amazon storefront where you're gonna find um, a lot of these things. But these instruments, and in this basket I have more instruments. So during our morning time, we listen to our folk song and I pull these instruments down and we have a grand old time singing and playing instruments together. This is our painting basket. So we have our wooden palettes 
and our watercolors. And then this big thing is actually made for gardening. I got it at Target, it's hearth in hand. Um, but what I do here is I keep everything in jars organized. So we have markers, pens, colored pencils, smaller markers, really fine tip markers, our pencils and scissors. So all of this stuff, when I'm when we are about to do school, I will just set this right in the middle of the table and we'll all use it at the same time. And when we're done, we'll organize it and it goes back on the shelf. And that really helps with keeping everything in one place. This cabinet holds three baskets. My daughter's basket, she's seven, so it has all of her binders and her personal school books. My son's, he's nine, he has his own binders and personal school, school books. And this is our Mail Monday basket. If you haven't heard about what we do with Mail Monday, make sure you check out my reel. I'll put a link in the description below where I explain how we use this basket and we do pen palling every Monday to help with language arts. Hopefully this encouraged you that if you're starting your homeschool journey or if you're finding yourself in a position where you need to homeschool in a tight space that it's totally possible and can be really beautiful and fun. So my top tips once again are to have things up high, have be creative with your storage, make it mesh with your, with your home decoration style already and try to keep your materials as minimal as possible. If you found that this was helpful to you, don't forget to like and subscribe below. And why don't you go ahead and comment what homeschooling space problems have you overcome and how, so we can all give each other ideas. Thanks so much, I'll see you guys next time. Just so you guys know, we are very excited to be doing a lot more YouTube videos regularly. We have ideas for curriculum reviews and vlog style posts, so make sure that you're following along.